Proceed. Judge Lynch and may it please the court, could I have uh, two minutes for rebuttal, Your Honor? Yes, you may. Thank you. Uh, the portion of the judgment, Your Honor, that sanction the payment of a fee by the shippers that have scanning stations at the exit of their yards in the Port of San Juan should be reversed. And it should be reversed because the fee that has been collected does not comply with the three prongs of the Evansville test. The Evansville test is, as the court knows, the test created by the Supreme Court to measure the constitutionality of this fees charge for the use of facilities in a port that receives interstate commerce. The three prongs have to be met, and the prongs are simple but important. First, the fee has to provide, has to be paid in exchange of a benefit for the payor of the fee, and the fee has to be reasonable in terms of the benefit received. Second, the fee has to be proportionate to the benefit received by the government who's charging the fee, and the fee cannot discriminate against interstate commerce. The records show that we prove that all three uh, prongs of the test are met. The first one is the benefit for a reasonable fee. The benefit to the payor in this case is nothing. Well, the, let, let, me, let me catch you on that, because can't, can't a port say that no ships coming in here uh, because we fear uh, explosives or contraband or something, no ship comes in here without getting scanned. Well, Your Honor, in the the no the use of the fee, the, the use of the port is charged in different in the, in different instances. But, but, but and I, it just seems to me a port can say these container ships that are out in the harbor, we're not going to let any of them get off any containers unless they're scanned. Yes, but that's a different question on of whether you can charge for that scanning well, to the payor. But then getting to unload is a big benefit. Well, getting to unload and we pay for warfare. But the point no, but is... You, you have to also be scanned if you're going to be unloaded. No, we are, we are scanned after being unloaded. We, we well, take... I mean, scanned is a condition of unloading. You have to submit to it. Yes, but the, the question is whether the scanning provides a benefit to me. I mean, if well, I... I doesn't it let you go into the port? If it was, let's, let's put this. Suppose you said you won't be scanned. You couldn't come into that port and unload, could you? If, if well, there, there are many uh, ships going in and out without being scanned at all. But, That's because they're at another terminal, or they don't have a container or their bulk or something. Yes. But if, if, you're going, if you want to go to this particular terminal that you want to go to and you want to unload containers, perform your basic business, you're obligated to get scanned. But, but the, the point is, Your Honor, that the particular fee that is being charged is for scanning. And you have to determine that there is a particular benefit for the scanning that is other than the benefit that I get from using the port, because I am paying all the other fees, entry of the port fee, warfare fee, security fee, and, and I'm leasing the facilities. My competitors, the, the competitors to the appellants that I represent, right now bring in containers and simply because there's no scanning station at the end of their facilities they don't get scanned and they are not going to pay because that's a ruling of the court that was an appeal and that's firm and final so we are now in a position in which certain shippers only get scanned and certain shippers only are forced to pay the scanning fee and that is the problem the problem is that we're being uh, charged for a service that represents nothing for us. Okay, I didn't understand that aspect of your case. You're saying that other containers come in, but because their terminals do not have uh, the scanning towers, they are not charged anything? They are not charged? For uh, a scanning fee. For, for scanning on account of the judgment below. First, Everybody was. Uh, uh, excuse me, that's true. Whether the judgment excusing other people is correct, I'm, I believe, is not a question presented on appeal. You're right, Your Honor. Okay. I, I have some doubts about it, but it's not a question presented to this court. All right. The legislature set up this uh, system. It has now been modified by a court, but don't we look at what the legislature intended? And the legislature intended that there be at least as much scanning as was feasible 
for containers coming into the port, and there is a perfectly valid public reason for that. Yes, but it's a perfectly valid public reason, Your Honor, that benefits the people of Puerto Rico. It doesn't benefit the payor. I mean, oh, no, I, it does, because you don't get in here unless uh, uh, the Commonwealth is satisfied you're not going to be a danger. Um, but I'm interested in this uh, contrast between the container companies that don't have to pay anything, even though they have containers, and your company. But I don't think that was the, the point of your briefing. Well, Your Honor, it is to, to a degree. I mean, the, the only benefit that the court found was a reputational benefit that had no basis well, on the record whatsoever. And, and, and the point that we're making is that we don't get that reputational benefit or any other benefit from the scanning. All right. Let's assume we disagree with you and there is some benefit, whether you call it the, reputational the, or not. Uh, you've got other prongs of yes. your argument. Could yes, you the other, to the, them? The other two prongs is, first, the court determined, the district court determined that there was, this was no, not a burden on interstate commerce. The only commerce entering the Port of San Juan, and that is undisputed on the record, is interstate commerce. It cannot be said that simply by reading the regulation and saying, well, you know, this. I, I think your better argument may be the proportionality argument. There's no proportionality because this is charged on the basis of the tonnage getting into the Port of San Juan. This is not charged on the basis of the scanning, on the basis of, of, of the number of, of uh, containers, on any basis other than the total tonnage getting into the Port of San Juan. And if that is the case, there's no proportionality, and the district court does not address even the issue. It does say that this benefit that we get is proportional to the, to the fee being charged. And well, but wait, when you say the, the fee, are you talking about the fee collected by the vendor, or are you talking about the fee you pay, your client pays? We we pay and we have the right to collect it from the client, Your Honor, and that's precisely why there is no reputational benefit, as the court concluded, because those who are not engaging in 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 contraband or trying to to sneak in goods without paying the taxes, they have an interest simply in moving their 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 cargo forward. Let me, right, if if we assume that the order below will stay in effect, that doesn't allow the port to charge shippers for whom there's no scanning at the facility, then doesn't it follow that all the scanning is going to be done of your clients? Well, I mean, the result of the, if, if, if what, I'm, I'm not sure that I understand your question, Your Honor, but if you, what you're asking is that there, as a result of the judgment, all the scanning is going to be doing, done in whoever decides to chip on the lines that have scanning stations, yeah, yeah. That, is, yeah. that is correct. And so they will pay 100 percent, not 101 percent, or not 99 percent. They'll pay 100 percent of the cost incurred by the port. Yeah, and one interesting thing, Your Honor, is that the same three stations continue to operate, although bulk cargo and all the other six shippers that have, there's a total of nine entry uh, yards, three have a scanning station, six do not. All the other six shippers are not paying, and still the same service has been given, which goes to the, the relationship between the You've fee. reserved two minutes. Yes. Thank you. Good morning again. Uh, this time uh, I'm arguing on behalf of the Puerto Rico Ports Authority. Uh, Your Honors, we believe that uh, the, the fact that there's a usage by the plaintiffs in this case and that there's a benefit it's not in dispute. We believe that we need not go and, and thread so fine as to go for reputational benefits because indeed the benefit is having uh, the right to put the merchandise through the port. And in that sense, it's no difference. And I believe that an analogy is in order to the fee that is charged by TSA that uh, in a plane ticket, even though as just as plaintiffs. Except it's not quite. Uh, the TSA fee is directly related to security. And um, when you scan the uh, cargo ships, in, in fact, more of the benefit comes to you in the form of uh, avoidance of tax evasion and not the uh, general uh, purpose of security. And then we have the fact that um, 
whatever the legislature intended, um, you now have uh, uh, a benefit to everybody in Puerto Rico. That's part of what you're saying. But only three of the shippers, as a result of the prior decision, end up uh, paying the cost. Now, it's true that the scanning has come down to only three of the terminals, but everybody gets the benefits, and only three of them pay for it. Because yeah, so did the Commonwealth advocate, I mean, before the district court, that it start making these distinctions? Well, Your Honor, uh, as a matter of fact, the distinction only comes after there was a, a judgment that uh, ruled uh, – Differently, the, all the shippers were plaintiffs to this case, and they, uh, they they were challenging the regulation and the law on the same uh, Commerce Plus grounds. It is only after the court found that... Uh, I, uh, you're not answering my question. What was your position? That the law is stronger without these exceptions? Or did you urge these exceptions? Would you answer that question? Well, the, the exceptions were not, were not urged by the state. All right. Thank you. Uh, also, we, we believe that uh, absent from this discussion and very important is the, the final inquiry of the Evansville test, which goes to the Pike analysis. This is a, 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 it's not a revenue-generating measure. It is a, a user fee. It is used to uh, fund a specific activity. Therefore, the plaintiffs have to show a substantial uh, burden on, the, on interstate commerce vis-a-vis the local benefit that was be being derived from the from the measure, and in this case, there is no evidence that there was any uh, shortage of, of of products in Puerto Rico that the business done by the plaintiffs had gone down in any way uh, after this, or that uh, there was any competitive advantage gained uh, from from other companies because of the scanning procedure. Therefore, this is uh, pretty much a commerce plus case that has no discussion on how uh, interstate commerce is implicated. The only discussion that is in the brief is that we believe that interstate uh, commerce is burdened because we have to pay the fee. But imposition of a fee in of itself is not enough to argue that there's a burden on interstate commerce, let alone a substantial burden on interstate commerce as required by Pike. I'm, I'm having trouble understanding how this thing works. It seems only three out of nine get scanned, three out of the nine terminals get scanned, if I no. understand. Oh, you have the scanning machines at only three of the terminals. So the other six terminals which don't have the scanning terminal, their containers come through without being scanned. Is that correct? The, the, yes. Uh, the, there, there's only scanning where uh, uh, scanning And, and you don't require equipment. the others to have scanning. Well, actually, there's no equipment to perform the scanning. That's right because you don't require that there be any equipment. So what's the purpose of the scanning? I mean, it seems you've got, it's like you've got a sign out in the port that says if you want to bring in a bomb or contraband, go to one of those six. If you don't, go here and get scanned. I believe it, it's a matter of, uh, of, of resources for, for being able to fund machines for all, for all entries. Sort of seems under-inclusive for what you're trying to um, accomplish. Well, it, it, the state is working within its financial limitations. No, no it isn't. You've imposed the cost of these uh, scanning terminals on uh, particular shippers and not on others. Um, I, know th I know Puerto Rico doesn't want to pay for this. That's why they've set up this uh, system. But it's a system that uh, applies differentially. No, it's not costing your client anything. Charging the shippers. The the, the charge is uh, is used to defray the costs of the shipping company of the scanning company. Yes. Yeah, right. So you could make all container uh, shippers ha have one of these devices. And I believe that that is the that, that is the goal of the of the law and of the regulation. Oh, so this is uh, I didn't see that anywhere. And there is no claim that this is a transition period in a longer running program. No, I'm not saying a transition period. It's, it's just as far as, as that, that, that is what the program entails, but uh, it's not described per se as a transition period. Okay. Thank you very much.
Good morning. May it please the court. This is Rosa Perez on behalf of the Secretary of Treasury in her personal capacity. <clears throat> uh, the Treasury Department, we must say, firstly, is not directly implicated in, in the implementation of the system or the collection of the user fees. However, we would like to address a fee and specifically point out the fact that these three terminals constitute 80 percent of the inbound cargo in Puerto Rico. So basically the majority of the containerized cargo that enters the island goes through these three ports alone. Um, yeah. The shippers know which, which ones get searched and which ones don't. You, know, you can be 100 percent certain that your ship won't be scanned if you just make sure you use a certain shipping line that uses a certain terminal. Um, yeah, if you're up to, up to mischief, either through contraband or through terrorist activities, you just avoid these three terminals and you ship on a different line that doesn't have a scanning machine, right? right. But, um, I also want to point out the fact that this is, uh, this was, uh, the, 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 the parties entered into this contract with the idea of further implementation in the future. So I beg your pardon. So this was done. This was done in a way to so initiate where is the scanning a, system. A, you point in the record to either a legislative mandate or uh, uh, an admin, uh, a regulation that says we're not done. We're uh, the next container terminal is going to have to install one of these machines. Well, not in that, no, not in those there, particular. There's nothing in the record, right? Not, not as you say, Your Honor, but. Okay. Um, the, may I ask uh, you, Council, may I ask you a question? Does the record uh, disclose whether the implementation of the scanning at these three facilities has permitted uh, the government to increase the frequency of inspections or intensity of inspections? at the other facilities? Yes, the record actually points out that in the years 2011 to 2013, um, 313,383 containers were inspected manually versus now, um, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm inverting the numbers. Those were the numbers that are currently, containers that are currently inspected versus 7,000 that were only uh, able to be, you know, manually inspected. So we're talking about a exponential um, effort here being done to to really uh, inspect incoming cargo. I, um, I'd like to follow up on that. Are you saying because of the scanning machines at, at the three terminals, you have been able to free up inspectors? that otherwise would have inspected at these three terminals to go to the other terminals, at the other six, and increase the number and rate of inspections at the other six? Is that what you're saying? The, these numbers pertain to the terminals that have the scanning stations, not not the ones. So my question Just, went. My question went to the remaining six, not those three. Does the record disclose that the presence of these scanners at the three terminals allows the government to do its job better at the other terminals? Uh, there's, there's not that I remember any particular okay. evidence on that. Oh, so there's no evidence one way or the other. I mean, the other thing you could have done is uh, reduce the number of inspectors because it's now done mechanically and not by hand. Do you know what happened? No, Your Honor. That's the information on, on what's on the record. But we would also want to, I think I'm done with the argument, but this is not a flat fee but a scale-based fee. Um, and the majority of the, this is not a revenue raising, but the majority of the money goes into the system to benefit okay. them. Okay. So Thank point you. Out that. May it please the court. My name is Ike Lugo. It is my privilege to represent the amicus curiae in this case as two services of Puerto Rico. Uh, your Honors, I, I, I prepared an argument today, but I wish, I think that it would be helpful 
to continue the discussion as to how this scanning is supposed to work in the future. Uh, my comments are limited from a business perspective because we are the exclusive provider of the services with regards to this project. Our contract, which is referenced in the opinion and order, is specifically envisions that the, that the intent is that we will scan 100% of all cargo containers that will come into Puerto Rico. That was the intent. My reading of the record, if I understand it correctly, the injunction filed by plaintiffs at the beginning sought to stop that, and the injunction was denied. But the plan of the Port Authority, as it pertains to us and how we are engaged with regards to this regulation, is for the scanning of 100%. The fact that 100% of, of containers of, or of bulk cargo as well? Originally, everything was supposed to be scanned. However, in light of the recent opinion and order, excluding bulk cargo, it would, be, it would have to be 100% of cargo containers. But, but the plan has always been that, to scan 100% of whatever comes into the Port of San Juan. Uh, of, of all ports in Puerto Rico, I'm sorry, of which the Port of San Juan handles 80% of inbound cargo to the island. Um, as amicus, I believe that, uh, and I respectfully ask the court to try to see this case from a real-life perspective. Uh, S2 Services of Puerto Rico is a subsidiary of RapidScan. RapidScan Systems is a world leader in security and scanning services with over 20 years of experience. Uh, in fact, the very same x-ray machines in this building that scan our bags this morning are manufactured by RapidScan. RapidScan offers services in all 50 states to both federal and local authorities uh, and, 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 and has many, um, offers a myriad of services with regards to security scanning. In none of our projects nationwide have ever been struck down for being in violation of the Commerce Clause. Thank this is a you, valid counsel. exercise. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I would like to address certain things that I think are not correct on the record. First, the amount of containers that come through terminals that have no scanning station is 40%, is 30, 38% to 62%. Uh, that's one. Secondly, this is only in one port of Puerto Rico. The, all the other ports in Puerto Rico are open and no scanning station whatsoever. Third, there are more inspectors needed now than before. No resources from the Department of the Treasury were released. The Department of the Treasury was brought into this because it, it only the Department of the Treasury has the authority to order inspections. And now the inspectors of the Department of, of the Treasury are tied up in these inspections that are paid from the fee for these inspections. And uh, uh, all I have to do to bring in contraband or bring in uh, 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 tax, evading, uh, tax evading goods is to use any other port in Puerto Rico or use these uh, lines that have no scanning. As to the Pike argument, Your Honor, initially we did attack the scanning as, as scanning, and that is what the Pike uh, test would apply to. The Evansville test goes to the fee, and certainly the undisputed uh, testimony of the expert in this case is that the system doesn't work. The system that has so many holes that there is no advantage whatsoever to what the government is doing and much less an advantage that is uh, uh, proportionate to the fee that has been collected. So that's the reason why we sustain that this uh, fee fails the three prongs of the Evanville's test. Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank the you. court will stand in recess.